Hello, this is Norman White. I want to prepare just a little short video on how to use Hadoop at Stern and how to access our small Hadoop cluster and move data into it. Uh, in other videos, we'll show you how to move data into Hive and create tables and stuff. But this is just a very short introduction to Hadoop. So the first thing you need to do uh, with Hadoop is you need to connect to our head Hadoop node which is the node from which you can issue all the Hadoop commands and interact with our cluster. So I'm going to SSH to my NetID at bigdata.stern.nyu.edu. I'm doing this directly from the terminal window on a Mac, but I could just as easily have been using PuTTY on a Windows machine. So here I am on Big Data, and Big Data is, is a server that we've set up just to um, be the front end for our Hadoop infrastructure. So how do I manipulate Hadoop? Well, let's try. Hadoop, then I'm going to issue a file system command. I'm going to list all the files in my directory on Hadoop. So here we see in slash user slash ny, there are a bunch of files. So what's different here? What's different here is that these files are not in my local directory, which is a completely different set of files. These are the files that are stored in the Hadoop file system, also known as the HDFS. So Hadoop data file system. So HDFS is where we need to put data if we want to manipulate it in Hadoop. So let me just issue that command again, so you can see my files. Um, and you can see I have a lot of files in here, as well as directories. So there's another major concept in Hadoop, that if you have a directory of files, you can, create, you can treat all of the files in that directory as a single file. Um, and in fact, Hadoop uses this uh, in almost all of its systems. For instance, if you move data into Hive, you create a table, you create a directory in Hive, rather. Um, you move your file or files into that directory. And then in Hive, which is an SQL interface, you create a table definition on the directory, not on an individual file. The assumption here is that all of the files in that directory have the same structure. Often they're just unformatted text, but they might be daily downloads of some formatted data. So every night you get one more, one more uh, file, and you don't want to keep changing the data definition. Um, so let's just look in uh, uh, it's one of my tables here. Um, let me expand this window a little bit so you can see it. Um, Let's look in, uh, well, let's create one. Uh, let's look in junk just to, to start. And notice I just have to give the name of the directory. I don't have to put slash user slash ny. It defaults to that. And there's nothing in junk, so let's get rid of it. Oh, it's RMR, excuse me. So the file system manipulation commands are similar, but not quite identical to Unix or Linux. OK, so now user NY junk is gone. So let's create a new one. So I've recreated a junk, but it has nothing in it. So if I want to put a file in it, let's see if I have any text files sitting around in my directory. Oh, yes. So I've got sure.txt sure and minnesota.txt. Um, let me look at, this is, I think, the all the stories of Sherlock Holmes. Yes, this is the Gutenberg project of the adventures of Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes. So let's move that from my local file system in my local directory 
into the Hadoop file system. What oh, was it? Sure dot text, right? So that is now taken a, a Linux file, sure.txt, and moved it into the Hadoop file system. Now, from other videos or other lessons, you should know that the Hadoop file system is a distributed file system. So that file has now been split into many pieces. Um, but we don't have to worry about that when we process it. So let's now look. I'll look into junk. That's ls recursively, do a list files recursively. And there is my sure.txt. If I want to take a look at it, and there it is. So um, if you just type Hadoop FS, it will give you a list of all of the let me do that again with a more. Um, yeah, more didn't work. Uh, let me make this window bigger. And you can see some of the, the Hadoop commands. So you can Google Hadoop and you'll find all the different commands. So these are the file system commands that allow you to manipulate, to move files into the Hadoop cluster, uh, manipulate them, change their names, create directories, um, change their uh, change their access rights, all the st standard file system commands. They are not the MapReduce processing commands. That you need to know about from someone else, uh, at least not from this video. This video is just wants to show you how to access the Stern Big Data cluster and move data into it in order to, to process it. Um, so that's all for now. Uh, at this point you should be able to know how to get data from a directory in the big data cluster um, and put it um, into the HDFS. But remember now it's a two-step process. You still need to get the data into the, the big data server, onto your directory or in our case, we have a direct, a, a very large folder. If you're dealing with big files, we have a folder called Big Temp that you can put your files in. Um, and you can see we have a lot of students and faculty who are using it. Many files in here. Um, what we ask you to do is if you move data from big data, and you can move it either with SFTP, with SCP, um, with uh, wget if you are trying to get a text file from another website. There are many ways. Um, so you, you, you would do something like this. Make their aj123 if that happens to be your net ID in big temp. cd aj123. And now you can sftp data in or you can SCP data from another site if you know where it is, or you can wget data from a website and bring it into this directory. And then you'll use the Hadoop file system commands to move that data from your big temp directory into the HDFS. So you, before you even do anything, you need to at least have PuTTY or have a Mac machine that has a terminal on it, and you have to have either SCP, wget, or SFTP available, all of which are on the Mac. Um, on Windows machines, you have to use PuTTY. Sometimes you have to use Sigwin um, to deal with some of these commands. Okay, that's all for now.